of the cosmos is contained in a robin's eye. It is cards tumbling softly, wider than the galaxies, falling and rotating just slowly enough to perceive, colour the deepest blue, not silent but sounding at the lowest possible hum, a hum that is soft around the edges, and perfectly straight, keeping form, but fuzzy and fraying at the edges, cards made of impossibly light, permeable felt, falling through permeable felt, suspended in the lightest, biggest air. That was what Flora said the night we jumped out the window, escaping from another prison. We ran off into the small hours darkness, to the secret place down below the ruined aqueduct, which we soon realised had been full of roosting birds all along. Sitting on pier number 23 with our legs dangling over the water, we waited for something to happen again. A heron stood on pier number 22, occasionally darting down to the curving surface of the river returning with a small fish in its beak, quickly swallowing it down through its long, juddering neck. The heron nodded at us. We felt on the same page with it down there by the water that turned completely blue below the creaking trees. The heron was just like us with its long eyebrows and beard, and it knew the muddy base of the river like the people we had met in the city in the tangle of nighttime streets lit in orange. Nearby, a little bird's nest bobbed up and down, balanced on two thin branches. I bet it was that robin that unlocked the window, said Flora. Every time I saw it around there, something good would happen. I looked into its eye, and there was another universe with other robins hopping around, probably also helping people to escape from prisons, singing strange music, and then in fact, in all of those robins' eyes, Flora often got carried away, not to say that I minded. In fact, I wish whatever carried her away would carry me off too, but I was pleased enough just to be along for her journeys and all the times and places that they took us to especially when she used words like foxglove or calico or puzzle, especially Northumberland. Flora's speech on the robins continued for some time. Occasionally magpies roared past us, and we saluted them. Eventually a lamb took soft, tentative steps from under the trees opposite. We shook hands with delight and wandered down to the first stepping stone on the path to the islands. Thank you. 
We pass a man in a swamp, sitting in a tree, reading and drinking cans of beer. We watch factories and tarmac plants turn pink in the evening in my town. We travel by lamplight through fir trees and the lamps go out and we use the light of the stars. We pass the hours in an inn, rehearsing a mystery play and playing cards with the pilgrims below the crescent moon. We run down an avenue of trees, looking up at the constellations in the night sky, towards a long, punctuated street. Sometimes we stumble and sometimes we sleep soundly on the warm, sandy storm. We ride in the boot of a car heading south and listen to speeches about the long coastlines of time that used to run through the time before the harvest, time to make hills out of. We see children scaling the rooftops of a port town and bright green plants bursting out of Joe Harriet's grave. We meet communists, monks, miners and wandering birds from County Fermanagh. We pass through boat yards and rug warehouses, secretly cross bridges in the middle of the night. We take a train down a collapsing pier, crossing the Kaiser's 1907 footprints. And finally, we look down the hillside and across the light blue sea to the islands. We look up at the wide sky that becomes the factory where the clouds that rain on Glasgow are made. We creep past the king of Bardsey Island, sleeping on specks of sand, sleeping softly beneath flickering specks of stars. Flora sat down on the sand and recounted the brief history of the Limerick Soviet. With each stepping song we change. We are the passages in the railway carriages. We are the sound in the leaves and branches. We are the waves that rearrange the shorelines. We are the top of a mountain with a view of all the other islands. And we become the most faint islands in the distance. Don't you stumble, don't you fall, don't you call and don't you shout. 
now When I sing we go running out Oh, green, green, rocky road To promenade in green Tell me to love, tell me to love In the middle of the long glass, glass, grass and wildflowers grow out of the sand. Each thing is in motion, swaying and meeting the different highways of light that cut through the clouds, coalescing and reorganizing endlessly on the horizon. Each thing is shot through with light, revealing the internal structures of the leaves, outlining the true colors of each petal at the bottom of the clear running stream. There are flashes of colors that dart into the thickening green, purple, orange, blue. A cluster of tall swaying trees seems to write out a call, and we jump the brook, climb over a fallen trunk, and follow paths made by unknown pilgrims to a place where the meadow meets the river and a tree grows over the river like a bridge. We lie above the water with legs dangling over the water, looking up at the swaying branches, watching the sky through the branches, and each thing is sounding and each thing is in motion, and we sway and balance with the breeze and dangle our legs in time with the small branches. We exhale as the small leaves grow and become part of this arrangement of motion. As we walk back to the sea, the constellations were visible in the daytime sky. We search for a sound we could add to this landscape, but nothing would do. So we sat down again quietly by the water. Francis stands on the Belfast docks looking at the Irish Sea. When we woke up, we had drifted down to a railway station platform in the forest. We saw Robin hopping along the sleepers pointing south. Stars began to fall from the bright blue sky, and we began the journey back down the big island. And will lengthen 
lonely road by many's the mile. We trundled through one million lights in the depot, past the radio tower in my town, past spilled pink clouds and streaks from aeroplanes all over my town, as we dropped towards the Atlantic cities. A bus rolls through the night trees and the night branches. In the wee small hours of morning, we stand in a quiet street, surrounded by animals. Occasionally millionaires pass by, mumbling to themselves. The light pollution creates the illusion of summer in the tentative spring, an illusion of the shallow nights of summer that hardly come at all. I lean against a tree, the glass rolls down the pavement, a leaf falls and the new white petals blossom into the deep blue sky, cutting into it like a constellation of stars only a few inches away from my nose. The big and small develop in the same way, said Flora. Only what are the branches of space, and what birds hop between them? You hop between the islands of the remaining city using streets as branches, trying to keep out of the cat's way, but there is one island that you cannot find. There is a red bicycle that the concrete square places in the sun that rotates through a new leaf growing over some old paint. In a window within a window, you glimpse a factory surrounded by marshland opened up to expose an enormous pipe covered with tiny workmen dressed in orange, and a plane takes off behind them from out of the derelict docks. You sit with a sandwich in a crossword at the back of a cafe. Eventually a man comes and hands you a key and you escape out of the back. There's a window full of clocks on a long street and an exhausted man drinking a beer smiles at you. Beneath the theatre marquees, people from every country brush against passing policemen. And there are people sitting at tables in the fog and dirt of the high road. We pass into a church and read about the jealous god and walk on through horse statues and towers, sometimes stopped by cameras and microphones. There are no herrings today, but the boiler is full of tea. In the middle of the day, you walk into a pack of dogs. You sit with a black pudding roll at the back of a cafe. There are butchers and a man covered in white paint drinking milk. We wander down abandoned railway lines, or accidentally walk the new river from the source to the head, knowing there is a river we could wait down one night, standing in the quiet river under the willow trees turned blue, and the sound of the river slowly and gently running towards the sea. We would be in a small air there, where what is said is meant and felt, and is made out of felt, and does not repeat echoes, each time making something new, and we could wade in that new feeling, never stubborn again. You discuss why St. Peter lied and passed the graves of Maurice Therese, members of the International Brigades, and a feeling of strange friendship, leaving a note of thanks on Guillaume's grave weighed down by a little pebble. There are stories of northeast China, high-speed trains and enormous cities. You sit drinking Turkish tea in the back of a chip shop. The glass steams up and the tiles are blue and yellow and you listen to a man sing, half joking, yet his voice is incredibly beautiful. You tell an enormous number of lies under a motorway for a cigarette. There are tens of thousands of postcards of every kind of picture collected in catalogue by an accountant from Ilford. The post office has been demolished and each corner is swollen with scaffolds. Men on new rooftops in the sun hanging overalls off girders. Soon each millimetre and each second and each city will be robbed and put into a defined and exploited place, and already there is so little time to be with one another, and everything is concerted against organising with one another. This becomes a fugitive place, lived out in narrowing cracks, spoken in low voices huddled around one cup of tea, among the ruins in reverse that surround us even now, that seem to appear intact out of nowhere behind scaffolding, the images of buildings held up with the rubble that they create, built to be seen and to remain empty and to obscure what disappears a little more with each passing second. You surprise yourself by saying a prayer in the church at Euston. You sit with an omelette and a tea at the back of the Valencia Cafe. A polite man wearing horn rim glasses loudly regales you with the precise story of how he learned some Arabic phrases, because his father was in Alexandria, a doctor in the desert war, and then he tells you the same story twice more with exactly the same phrasing and intonation. And someone else says that they're from Uzbekistan, Someone else says that they're from Bangladesh, and here they feed the people who cannot pay. You see people playing cards by a blue window, by a doorway leading to a sky full of crescent moons. Victoria is in full motion at rush hour. You read a letter by the lamplight that dodges through the crowds of branches silhouetted against the blue evening sky. 
You sit on a marina at the back of a cafe, legs dangling over the side, listening to seagulls. There are people on the street somehow clinging on, drink concealed in their coats, and every time you come here something else is lost. Another place breaks off and falls into the sea. We walk tentatively down to the entrance of the chessboard church, passing below the stone tide and long green leaves into the collage tunnels of the church. Light falls in shafts from windows high above, illuminating the graves of Elizabethan philosophers, hovels where the founding fathers learned trades, and a place where the Virgin Mary was once spotted. The animals line up on the pews and we find a fragment by opening a book at random which reads, There is a country beyond the stars. Sitting back we can see the towers through the high windows of the church, one thousand years in a glance, and we plug the organ in and listen to its map, and the map leads to the first star in the evening sky for a long time. Look at the big star, said Flora. Like a robin's eye, it means others are breathing. And we run through the city yelling surprises at one another. We stagger out of the long glass tunnel of the new railway, clutching our bleeding noses with white tissue paper and fall through a ceramic entrance between square columns into the station concourse, facing the archway that used to hold the promise in the beginnings of the West. Once this place was our joy, but now the rails are rusted and curling, the paint on the post train is flaking off and it stands sadly idle. There will be no more letters sent from here. We are watched and stopped from balancing on top of the timetables that flicker and malfunction, though the guard lets slip a sad smile. Some way away a man shields his face with a felt hat from the camera's flash, and the tide drags us off in opposite directions, waving and descending staircases, staring out and cursing, trapped behind the windows. A car sits alone in a multi-storey car park. A ruined church retreats slowly in the rain, and now the land looks like it is cooling off after a blaze. The grey clouds are thick and sagging, the green is very green, the white is a problem and the blue paint on the platform fences is deep with droplets. The rain falls on the roof, punctuating another speech in a secret corner. The crowd are weary and quiet. The speech stands up true, gathering strength from uncertainty, but it is heavy as well, and its colours are chipped, and we long to see what it promises repeats and promises. Little birds in a crowd disperse round the round silver silos, round an old red factory marked with old glass, round the old red bridges made of chipped red bricks that hop over the dark green canal, over tall reeds growing out of a waterlogged field in my town. There is a factory in the rain, piles of stone in a freight train, corporation warehouses and steeples in the rain, and three boys smoking in the car park by the trains. The smoke rises into the air, steam from the factory chimney in my town. And there is that place on the platform to stand later on, but only chance leads you down that line, and at present there is rubble everywhere and a strange carnival moving through the square. I sit with Dog on the flyover looking out the window at the freight trains rumbling through my town. The old train seats are like the carpet in Rutherglen, the one we looked at as though its patterns were a map of another world, gently tracing routes along its rivers and highways. Who took it up and fastened it to this carriage? 
Two pilgrims take out a deck of cards and start a friendly game. Cows graze underneath the motorway. Horses drink steeper water from the floodplain. Rabbits play on the rabbit island. An orange butterfly is saved by a brown shoe. A muntjac wanders through the railway trees. An owl sits smoking in a tree and later flies into my dream. There is light in the hills, a little faint line of light. We stop suddenly and get out to wander through the near fields waiting. A robin looks my way, transmitting short notes, and I'm prickly all over, leaning on a gate. But this time the map remains hidden and the robin hops into the pages of a book. And by the bandstand, John's silent prayer rushes through the head like a river. And it's so easy to be scared or caught in a bad current when it's a quiet thing and a gentle thing. Like the river at night in the thick summer air, the willow leaves turn blue and drifting down to settle on the surface of the water, and the air thick with sounds and insects, and there is light from the stars reflected in the slow river, reflecting the robin's eyes as we lie down and look up at the spilled stars, at the plough, our colourful cloths, and little wooden pier into the river, our lengths of string and floating islands of painted wood, bobbing in the slow river. Beneath the shimmering tree we climb or doze, listening to the heat of the fields, the red bricks in the thick breeze, the old bridge, dabbed with paint and hung with colourful cloth, the breeze pushing the widening river, down to the sea, our little mooring place painted simply down by the sea, and we sail down quietly, even the small ones and animals, to play our games of chance and move and dance by the sea. throw a dice and wake up at the bottom of the well, a red brick warren built of mysterious tracks and painted gables, of well-trod mud and men drinking beneath canal and railway bridges, and dogs on every corner and bus passengers huddled up against the wet glass. On a ledge I place the wooden flower and the wooden petals we found in the churchyard, and I wish we didn't take them. I'm fixing the rope and repairing the bucket, I'm wading in the water at the bottom of the well. There is a whole world of pictures in the blue and brown water, a still world but completely rearranged by the slightest movement. And once Flora said time is like glass but a liquid and is constantly sounding. Sometimes the well becomes dark and scaring and the circle at the top becomes dull, but other times blossoms fall down and settle on the blue water like cards being dealt. And you can hear wind from the sea blowing through the branches of the trees and above them the low hum of the stars, and maybe there are stars above the stars. A soft blue mountain range as big as the feeling that comes like the tide at the bottom of the well. And in those small moments everything works together in motion, and a cathedral turns and a pencil turns in front of it, and I turn too, and a song makes a new map that lines up with an old map, and the fog lifts and I dig another tunnel towards the ground. I stand in the water and play the game of waking up, I close my eyes and slowly the drips and echoes on either side become the sound of traffic and the drops become the city rain and my feet are standing on the traffic island in the middle of the Euston Road. I look west down the Euston Road lit up at night. I open my eyes and see the well on the way to the Euston Road and the well is a way to get out of the well, a map to no map, a stepping stone. From above there is a sound of wind passing through the branches and the sun comes out and illuminates the red brick walls of the well and a robin flies down to the bottom in one swift movement as though suspended from a struck thread. I was near the top of the well when a hand reached down, and I shook Flora's hand as she dragged me out of the well, and I also shook a bird's hand. 
For some reason Flora was dressed in a postman's uniform. Look at all this treasure, she said, and we sat down on the grass and poured over the sack full of old letters. In the sun we travelled through the paper gates of the correspondences, treading the paths of curly biro lines across oceans of blue airmail paper into a lost world we longed to be part of, a landscape of lost people gambling and travelling and marrying and leaving and returning, and we were full of sorrow for all the people who were gone, but we laughed too and the things we read we agreed were maps to be thoughtful and gentle in the world. We followed them to a bridge beneath a bridge where music played. The path to the summer was blocked with water for now, so we looked across the fields past the willow trees, past rubble and ruined offices below the full moon, to the pink factories of Victoria in the evening, and the crowd of Victoria in the evening turned from negotiations into horses. The wind washed through the leaves above, a bird hopped over a squirrel sleeping on a branch, and the sky turned purple. Flora said the springtime is always difficult, and always contains such moments as these where each thing, the leaf, the sky and the bird all suddenly dance in harmony, and only now will they have these deepest new colours. Though the spring is difficult, it is always punctuated by this rhythm that pulls you back into life, that cut through the strange pull towards death that comes in the spring. These dancing moments draw you back to life, they argue for it, and you can only find the way to join the dance. I nodded and looked at the stars and bridges and people walking in the fields. I was born 27-7-33 at 277 King Street, Rutherglen. My mother told me it was during thunderstorm at 3pm. My father had been playing current hit record on our old windy up, Stormy Weather. He sang this. My father Arthur, too young to be part of older McCaffrey's, Frank, John, Sissy, etc. Helped at top of young ones, known affectionately slash mockingly as Fayther. Helped his mother, dependable McCaffrey's in Glasgow clearances in Ireland. He, Frank McCaffrey, poor at Upland Farm in Monea. Sister farmed, he frank, bit of a wanderer. Boats to Glasgow equals spirit, trade seeking fortune, tall and sandy. Ma, Esther Connolly, cavern, tall and black hair, leave on land, drawn to economic opportunities in Clydeside. She textile works, my dad their mid offspring, Mary Duncan Alec, John McKem, Flora McIntyre, Mary Slaven, all Glasgow because of Highland famine clearance. My job, 1940s, get Arthur to school dodging Lizzieville gangs. We Arthur showed us all the way into higher education by blazing trail, emboldened rest of us to try. Eternally grateful.
supposed to. I'm not joking. It's not as painful, man. I think we have Sometimes the clouds fray and become wispy, producing thousands of possible paths, making a picture of the unnamed way, revealing a pale spring sky that turning to night will reveal the spring stars standing over the little red street, the place where the journey begins. Running through the rain, through clocks and red bricks, through wet shoes and wet trees towards a railway in the distance, we waved suddenly to a crazed bird that hailed us as it leapt off into the sky. Flora's hands moved in crazy patterns as she explained about how the robin's songs drew maps we could follow, and how their beaks were like arrows but that each robin was itself an island, and it was just us having fun that connected them, and we were the branches and we could change our branching to anything any time we liked. We ran across the widest fields towards the wooden steeple and its spinning compass to return the wooden flowers and the wooden petals we had found before, and gently we placed them back into the grass growing out of the graves below the tree that had lost them. And when we had done this, we looked back and saw the people we had lost smiling at us. But it looks as though we're in trouble again, said Flora. Even the robins can be part of it. We must be extra careful. The prisons were different each time, creeping up with ever more efficient secrecy, emerging out of any pattern, even the helpful ones, always in different forms, transparencies laid over everything. All would seem well, light turning the grass a brighter green, and then suddenly we would realise we were in a new cage. We were scared there could be another world outside this world, an insisting world, and that it was always insisting at us to leap for it, when all we wanted was to leap into the big air. And we ran through the white blossom towards the wooden gate and we leapt over it. Evening began to fall as we ran back along the little cliffs to our secret place again, down through the overgrown tangle of new green and sudden insects. It was the first evening of the living year, and falling down the hill we stared wide-eyed at the blue clouds that changed from mountain ranges to foaming oceans, and even so far inland we were by the sea again, and across the bridge and through the calling gate the sound carried for the first time in that thick, still way, somehow easier to move through like falling cards, and for the first time the muddy paths seemed to glow purple and the leaves hummed and emitted a glowing green in the evening light, the light that hangs in the warm air after the sun has disappeared, hanging over the river standing completely still below pier number 23, reflecting the last waiting tree amongst wide glowing leaves below the surface, and turning back the skies were orange over the orange light of a distant town, and the heron flew through the lights and the mallard started and the tunnel of trees and piers seemed to grow in front of our eyes, announcing itself, and we ran up the steps to the bridge and the canal was full of pink skies and blue factory smoke and the geese hissed at us with pink tongues, watchful of the parade of new goslings that pecked at the moss on the banks, inspecting the stone and falling behind and running after the rest, and all of us, me and Flora and the heron and the geese, looked to the west, and we recalled the smell of the new green that scratches your nostrils and our eyes dilated to let in and join with the blue half-light and each thing moved as it liked but in one motion too the bats shooting past us and back into the trees each sound and each leaf reflected in the water each call of each lamb and each footstep and there were no more pictures darkness surrounded us we could hear the freight trains and we kept running through the night at the last moment we spotted a locked window and fishing in our pockets we found a transparent key our old places were gone, and I wished so much we could all go together, but I felt better when I hoped where we were going would be the beginning of us all going together. Between something and nothing would be the branches we made. We jumped out the window and started again to the islands. <laughs>
Hey. Hey.